Oh, yeah, yeah, I've run out of battery on my EV. No problem, we'll send someone over to check. Hiya, oh, yeah. can I? Oh, yeah, it says zero miles range. Yeah, it's our battery. Yeah, we do need a lorry after all. I told you you needed a lorry. I've been here three hours already. Hello and welcome to another video today. We are talking about a celebrity called Helen Skelton. Gotta be honest, I've no idea who she is, but I saw this article and thought I'm going to address that. Helen Skelton in the mirror, stranded in electric car after it stops working during evening journey. So basically she was on her way to meet someone from some dance thing which is on the telly on a night time to distract you from the real world and stuff that's actually going on. Um, her fancy electric car failed to make it to the end destination, much to Helen's dismay. She shared the bad news with 452,000 followers on social media as she sat in the stricken vehicle. She said, I thought electric cars were the future. Many people did. You're all wrong. Followed by mind blown and angry emojis. She said, I had an electric car over a decade ago, a Nissan Leaf. It didn't work. I could never charge it and it was really impractical. Over a decade later, an electric car not working out. Can't charge it and not for the first time, stranded. So here we have a celebrity with a huge reach telling people that electric cars don't work. Welcome to the green revolution. Anyway, that was it. Didn't want to talk too much about that because it's easy. It's cheap content. And I'm sorry for that, but I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Wells Online article. The truth about electric cars running out, how often it happens and how it's fixed. So basically, this is an article that was written on the back of the Helen Skelton thing, which is why I used that to introduce it. And they speak to the AA about how often electric cars are breaking down and what causes the problems. Now, I think this is quite interesting. UK's biggest breakdown services have revealed that electric cars running out of charge is very rare and they're fully equipped to deal with the problem at the side of the road. Let me say right now, if you work in recovery, and I know many of you do, many of you are truckers and taxi drivers, basically just real people. It's real people that follow Jeff buys cars. So if you work in recovery and you want to add something to the kind of vehicles that you're recovering, please email me. Don't put it in the comments because sometimes I miss comments. There's so many comments coming in on these videos. I can't catch up with all of them. I do try to, but I always feel really bad when I catch up with a really good comment like a week after it's been posted. So just email it straight to me, jeffbuyscars at gmail.com. Let me know how many EVs you're recovering and what the problems you're finding. Is this a load of whitewashing? A spokesman for the AA said, the stats for drivers actually running out of electrical charge are surprisingly low. Only 2% of EV breakdowns that the AA attended last year were for a flat main battery. So what he's saying is a more common fault is the 12 volt battery, which powers the control systems for the main battery. The battery can drain for a number of reasons, like the lights being left on or lack of use or systems left switched on. Okay, so what he's saying is, only 2% of call-outs are due to range and the vehicle not having any range. The rest of them are due to the vehicle not being able to go anywhere because the other battery is knackered. What? Also, it doesn't give any numbers. So what I want to know is when they're going out to these EVs, if we're going to start talking about percentages, why don't you tell us what percentage of these breakdowns are for flat tyres? Because the EVs don't carry a spare and they're so heavy that they're going through tyres at a higher rate than a normal petrol or diesel car. I don't know if that's true. That's me speculating. That's just me doing some basic man maths. If you put more weight in the car, you've got more pressure on the tyres and the tyres are going to blow out more often, especially as the roads are decreasing in quality, which we know the roads everywhere are pretty much terrible. Again, if you're in recovery, let me know. Uh, drivers of EVs will normally get ample warning from their car's dashboard that the EV battery charge is low. Okay, so he's saying that people do get a good warning that their range is low and then they go find a charger. And if it's an emergency situation, it probably charges, it probably costs more to charge it than it would to fill up a petrol or diesel. It gets better. We have a number of solutions. All our patrols are EV trained. So a patrol will attend and will diagnose the vehicle to confirm that the vehicle is out of charge. <laughs> What does he do to confirm the vehicle's out of charge? Oh, yeah, yeah, I've run out of battery on my EV. No problem, we'll send someone over to check. Oh, yeah, can I? Oh, yeah, it says zero miles range. Yeah, it's out of battery. Yeah, we do need a lorry after all. I told you you needed a lorry. I've been here three hours already. Brilliant. Uh, 
When it comes to recovering EVs, our roadside patrols have a couple of options. The fastest method being the use of the AA's innovative freewheeling hub system so they can tow you. It can be fitted quickly to the casualty vehicle and saves our members having to wait for a truck. I'd love to know some details on that because these EVs are so much heavier. There's some little AA van turning up to tow away a BMW iX or Skoda Enyaq. Is it the Enyaq that weighs like three tonnes? How much diesel is that van then using? Uh, on which, on some occasions, due to the casualty vehicle weight or size, a truck will be required to move the outcharged vehicle. Oh yeah, he goes on to confirm exactly what I just thought. Most of the AA vans are useless because the EVs are so heavy. Uh, he also says, where is it that he says about charging it? It's here. Um, most of our patrol vans also have wheels up towing capacity. So he's talking about the fact that you can tow without the wheels being on the ground. Uh, here we go. Having been the first breakdown company to come up with a practical and efficient solution to giving an emergency charge to a flat EV... <laughs> a practical and efficient solution to giving an emergency charge to a flat EV. What he's talking about there is a generator. <laughs> it's a generator. Uh, the only roadside assistance company in the UK that can use this pioneering British design technology. <laughs> it's got to be a generator, hasn't it? It's a diesel powered generator or he's running it off the main diesel generator from the truck. <laughs> Oh, we're really excited to be speeding up the charging to five kilowatts so we can save members even more time. So what he's saying is the five kilowatt chargers can add 10 miles of range in half an hour. So they've got to run a generator for half an hour to get you home. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, it wasn't this funny when I read it at home, but when you read it out loud, it really is. So AA President Edmund King says that basically people don't realise that people think that EVs break down all the time due to lack of range. And what Edmund King says is, no, they don't break down all the time because of lack of range. They break down all the time because of other things. <laughs> EVs and combustion cars share the same top two reasons for breakdowns, which are idiot owners. That's the answer. If you know cars and if you love cars and if you look after your car, you are statistically a whole heap less likely to end up needing the AA because you look after your vehicle. That's not the bit that he said. He said, EVs and combustion cars share the same top two reasons for breakdowns, which are tyres and the battery. Your tyres go flat, your battery goes flat. You need to learn how to deal with that on your own at home. Get yourself a good puncture repair kit. Make sure you've got a good jack. Practice taking your tyre off. Get yourself a good uh, jump pack, like the one I used in my video the other day, powersparkignition.co.uk, it's about 125 quid. It is flipping brilliant. It's small enough to keep in your glove box. It will jump start a car, I don't know, 20, 30 times before it goes flat, depending on how flat the car is. I can't tell you how many times I have been saved and other people have been saved because I have one of those in my glove box. In fact, uh, as more charge points and rapid chargers are installed across the country, well, as we saw in my other video, they're not being installed at any great rate. The number of cars failing to reach one will further reduce, providing more confidence to drivers to help make the switch. No, it seems to me like um, drivers seem to be losing confidence in EVs as opposed to gaining confidence in EVs. So let me know what you think of a video where I laughed far more than I expected that I would laugh. Tell me in the comments if you have an EV. Have you broken down? When was the last time you phoned the AA? When was the last time I phoned the AA? Um, when was it? I can't remember the last time I phoned the AA. Let me know anyway. But more importantly, if you work in recovery or you work for the AA, if you want to email me anonymously, if you want to email me anonymously, please do. Jeffbicecars at gmail.com. Tell me from your side of the fence what you think is going on. Um, speak to me in the comments. Bit of a fun video, that one. It wasn't meant to be, but I, I enjoyed making it. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Thanks for watching.